Okay, so I I know this is kind of late, like at least two weeks or whatever, but I wanted to give an in-depth uh, review and an analysis of Bad Boys Wide or Die. That's the most recent one, starring Will Smith as um, Mike Lowry, and then, yeah, Mike Lowry, Mike Lowry, and then uh, Marcus Burnett, played by M Martin Lawrence, who is absolutely hilarious in this movie. I don't know why my download speed is so low. This is a problem. I'm going to have to talk to Verizon about it. Anyway, uh, so after watching Furiosa like eight times, I saw this one a fourth time. Yeah, I know, Bad Boys 4, saw it four times. Um, it's not for life like the third one is actually titled because a lot of people have issues with that, the title. They should have called the third one Bad Boys Wide or Die, especially with the fact that Mike almost died and that his Captain Howard died. And they should call this one for life, you know, because it's about life and redemption. And what I mean is, so the whole plot is, Captain Howard, right before his death, had been working on some, some, an assignment that his bad boys were completely unaware of. He didn't tell anybody about it. He kept it under wraps. He had gotten some type of intel regarding, um, something about the cartels. They were basically keeping the, uh, terrorist, um, they were basically giving the government information about t any possible terrorists because after 9-11, nobody cared about drugs being sn uh, snuck in, snuck into the country, as, uh, kind of paraphrasing what a character says in the movie, and, uh, well, basically, he had a problem with that, with how the government was using the cartels for intel on any possible terrorist activity, and while one would think that the government has got, like, America's best interest at heart, you're sneaking in drugs, which is tearing apart families, getting people addicted, people are dying. It's messing with, you know, American lives. All because it's like sacrificing death in one way and, and guaranteeing another more slower way. So that's what's responsible, according to the story, uh, for all the drugs from the Mexican cartels into the United States. And Captain America, oh, sorry, I was about to say Captain America, Captain Howard was trying to shut it down. He was trying to catch who was responsible because apparently there was a rat somewhere. There was someone on the inside, a few people that he was trying to bust in order to stop this whole charade. And apparently, I'm going to go ahead and look at IMDb on my phone. We have the cast, you know, besides the main characters. We have Vanessa Hudgens playing Kelly. Alexander Ludwig that plays Dawn, who is the tech guy. He's, you know, the guy that operates the drones. And the drones come in handy, like, in the, like the final fight. Paulia Nunez, who plays Rita. He's one of she's one of Mike's uh, prior love interests. And by the way, Mike has married. Mike Lowry finally got married in this in this film. They waited to number four for him to get married, which is actually a good idea plot wise. Eric Dane, who plays Mc, McGrath, who is a central character in the movie, I will let you know in a little bit, as well as Lone. Goofold, he may know him for the Fast and Furious movies of 2005 and 2007, respectively. He plays Lockwood. Jacob Superior, who reprises his role as Armando, the son of uh, Mike Lowry. He's a Spanish son. You know, he um, later, he was uh, Mike Lowry, according to Bad Boys for Life in the third movie. He had, he had a whole relationship with a Spanish woman who he was pretending undercover to be on the same side as Mike was pretending to be. Uh, he had pretended to, to go rogue and join the cartel's side, you know, but actually he was a double agent. He was undercover and he had developed a relationship to the point he fell in love with the boss of the cartel and she became impregnated with a uh, you know, with his child, and that child turned out to be Armando, which, you know, her mom, his mom had uh, hid that information for him from him for so long, and so basically she was trying to get revenge on everybody that was responsible for her being busted, including Mike Lowry, who ended up being Armando's father, and he, you know, realized that he was lied to, and in this one, 
It's some funny shit, so... Or dysfunctional shit, as uh, Marcus would say. You got Melanie Laborde, who plays Christine, who is uh, Mike Lowry's wife. She's, I think, his fitness, his physical therapist, back from the last film when he uh, had to get out of the hospital because he had gotten shot by Armando before he found out that he was his father. Um... Yeah, I was trying to see if she's in the last one. I guess she's not. She's kind of a new character. Anyway, you've got Tasha Smith, who plays Teresa, uh, who is, you know, Mar Marcus Burnett's uh, wife. Uh, and Lee Seahorn, Seahorn, who plays Judy, that's the daughter of, of Captain Howard. Um, and, you know, Captain Howard is played by Joe... Partiano. He's been playing Captain Howard from the very first film. The first two were directed by Michael Bay. And Michael Bay, he has a cameo in this movie, believe it or not. DJ Kelly is as Manny. He's from the last film, from that hilarious part in the beginning. Um, after Mike gets shot, he, he, he goes looking for intel, and he goes to Manny for it, and he has this hilarious scene when he ends up smashing Mary's fingers with a fucking hammer. And Then you got John Sally, he plays Fletcher, who is the tech guy from Bad Boys 2, I believe. He's the one that's in jail, and according to the storyline, Captain Howard helps him, helps, helps him get like a deal or something, he gets himself straight, and he ends up being an artiste, quote-unquote. Then you got Bianca Bet is that Bet Hoon who plays Megan, who is Marcus Burnett's daughter and also the wife of his son-in-law Reggie. Dennis Dennis Green who plays Reggie and, Le and and Reggie has an awesome scene at the end. Not even the end, it's like the end of the second act. Gwen. Hiffel, who plays Callie, uh, who is the daughter of Judy, uh, a.k.a. Captain Howard's granddaughter. And Derek Russo, one of his way to uh, the Russo brothers of you know, direct transport, the directed Avengers. He plays Litz, who is like, kind of like, um, is that's uh, McGrath's muscle guy. He's the one that wants to put the bad boys down. Uh, uh, Carter Weiss. Newsom, Little Marcus, I, I guess that's the son of Marcus. Levy Tran, he that plays Wolf, who is, she is McGrath's uh, primary shooter besides uh, Lentz. He's kind of, as a, I guess, his white hand woman. And some other actors, including J. Devon Johnson, plays Wes Brown, who is one of the U.S. Marshals that's on the side of Judy. Yeah, Judy is a U.S. Marshal. She wants to put uh, Armando down because Armando's responsible for, you know, sniping out and shooting via sniper rifle for her dad, uh, Captain Howard. And we're just going to quit reading the credits for now because, you know, that's just pretty much extra, extra characters and cast after that. So, like I said... Captain Howard has been walking behind the scenes, kind of off the radar, by finding these people who are responsible for, um, you know, letting drugs be snuck into the country. And the way it, it walks is, is actually quite sophisticated. He There's these two points where Marcus Burnett and Mike Lowry have to find, they have to find two key puzzles of the whole mystery. So the first time, um, the bad guys... That'll tr that have ended up putting Captain Howard's name on the FBI's radar, basically making him look like a bad guy. Try to pin pin the whole thing on him and make it look like he's the one who went rogue. That he was working with the cartels. There was this whole moment when uh they have this press conference, and you know of course this is after Mike ends up, I'm sorry Marcus ends up in the hospital because during Mike Lowry's wedding. There's this whole scene where Marcus is dancing with everybody, and then in the midst of the dance, he has a heart attack, f falls, and he has this whole weird uh, vision thing to where he sees his former Captain Howard, and Captain Howard tells him it's not his time. Then he's like thinking, oh, I could live, I live, I, I'm just not my time, I can't die. And so he wakes up out of the hospital bed, and Mike is sitting there asleep, and then he actually catches Marcus leaving, and he has to go all the way up to the roof to see what's going on with his partner. And 
Marcus, Le Marcus Bonetta is standing, standing right there on the edge of the roof. And he's like, you need to get down. And he's like, I can't die and all this. Well, it doesn't say it until later, but he starts acting goofy. Won't spoil it too much. I, I know I said it would be an in-depth review, but I'm not trying to, like, really spoil it. Some, you know, it's hilarious. Anyway, they end up getting down. And, uh, I can't remember every little detail. But eventually they make it down and, uh... I think I think they start to understand that Captain Howard has been operating with the cartels, but Mike Larry, aka Will Smith, he doesn't believe it, not one bit, and, and uh, he's like, it's something else has to be going on. So they make it to this press conference, and that's when Marcus says, a press conference, really? Meaning, like, did they really have to do it that formal? Like, couldn't they just do it like a small team? But, and you, and, and, um, Rita's like, I'm sorry you had to find out like this, because she understands that that's the guy that she replaced, basically. Because Rita, um, was, 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 uh, became the captain after Captain Howard was shot and, 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 uh, for life. So, you know, the, the FBI agent ends up saying, like, you know, we we, we need to get what we need to catch his dirty ass. And then, then that upsets Mike Lowry, and he's like, well, you know I was with him, right? So, call him dirty one more time. You know how Will Smith does with the one more timelines, you know? Keep his wife's name out your fucking mouth. Seriously. Anyway, um, he ends up finding out that uh, somehow Captain Howard is framed. And that's what he's telling the readers. Like, I'm telling you, Captain Howard has been framed. We're going to find out who's the real, who's the real uh, rat. So they do some information gathering. They find out that uh, for some reason, as the bad guys are trying, to, they're they're hacking into like something to his computer. You know, Captain Howard had weak encryption on his computer, so basically they have to hack into it. But they trip a spell safe. Well, I say they because the, the hacker, which has got to be a woman, it's got to be a woman that's damn near bald. Why can't they just get a woman with long hair like you had in, in Madame Webb? That god awful ADR movie. I mean, at least they had a hacker that had a woman that was with actual hair. Anyway, she says, We tripped the fail safe, and uh, that's when <laughs> Blitz, played by Derek Russo, says, What the fuck do you mean, we? And I just thought that was funny because she probably was trying to include the team without really thinking about it. But then again, some people, I don't know if they identify as we or not. I don't identify as we, but I keep saying we. A lot for some reason, and I catch myself every time. I'm like, why do I keep saying we? What the fuck do I mean? We, damn. Anyway, she, they trip a fail safe, or she trips a fail safe because she's the one doing the hacking. And that causes a message to pop up onto Marcus's phone, which I don't understand how that works. Is that what, what if Marcus had gotten a new phone ever since the events of For Life? Is it connected to his phone number? It just must be. Um, because they will end up needing to get new phones if they have to ditch them later, but anyway, back on present. So, Marcus says, hilariously, he's texting us from the other side, and Michael I was like, no, he's not, Marcus. And they find out that, uh, what Howard was, had been, has been doing. He gives a piece of the information involving there's somebody dirty, you need to find them, you have to finish what I can't, what I couldn't, and he's like, fuck me. By the way, the whole fuck me angry scene that you saw in the trailer, it's not in the movie. That's one. That's the one scene that they kind of do differently. You know, the trailer always has, there's always something that the trailer is different. It's the same line, but it's not with the same energy as they had in the trailer. It's kind of like toned down in the actual film. Anyway, he's he's upset because he knows that if they're viewing that message, if they are viewing that message, that means he's died. He's, he's, he's dead or he's been killed, which actually adds more to it because... Um, Captain Howard kind of predicted his death. Not what he predicted, but he figured that what he was doing was, in fact, very, very likely to get him killed. And that's why he left that message, because he could probably, he could sense that he was on very, very close to getting caught and killed. And he actually was killed by Armando, which is why they seek him later in the next scene, because, which I'm about to get to, because, um... That's what caused them to see the message. It's a, it's one of those, you will only see this message, if you see this message, that means I'm dead, kind of uh, scenarios. Anyway, they end up seeking out Armando, Armando because he's the only other source to have. And according to him, uh, he says, no, he wasn't dirty. He was on to the ones that were. 
meaning that Captain Howard was working to find the ones that were dirty, that were responsible for shutting everything down. So apparently um, there were some people that were high up, which I'll talk about later, that because they were high up, he really didn't, he, he had to be very, very careful about where he was treading. He couldn't just quite just get rid of them. He had to find who was responsible and, and do it the whole legal way of getting the evidence to convict him and all that. So otherwise, otherwise they can just deny it. And anyway, so they asked, so we'll, so um, Mike Lowry asked him, can he identify the 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 killer? Because uh, Armando says, I've seen him before. And he's like, do you know his name? Like, he's like, no, I don't, I never got a name, but can you identify the killer? Yeah. So if they get some photos in front of him, he knows which which one is the right one because his you know visual memory, and um, so Mike Lowry has this whole uh, plot or uh, a plan to escort his son to Miami to question him properly, you know, with the recorder and all that, but they have to do so safely um, because. Right afterwards, and this is actually doing the whole, you know, right, well, well not after, not after the press scene, some inmates try to kill Armando. And there's this whole fight scene showing off his skills, you know, just to remind us how much of a badass he is, really. He ends up killing, damn near killing these guys. He uses weights. He even has this cool thing where he ties his jumpsuit to one of these weights. And he's doing it right before he ends up using it. You know, he tries to play it off like he's going to walk out with it or something, but we all know what he's up to. And this is also this moment right before one of the guards lets out a smoke grenade that he has one of the weights, and he's just about to smash it on the guy's neck or whatever. But he has a moment of, of a, I guess, moral, moral, moral epiphany, and he, he decides he doesn't want to kill the guy because he, you see, he doesn't want to kill anymore. He doesn't want to be known as a killer anymore. He doesn't want to be a killer anymore. So... Anyway, the smoke grenade is released, and he's, of course, handcuffed, and which is why you would wonder why did the guards just, besides to show off what happened, you know, to show off his skills, why would the guards just let it escalate to that point? They're kind of lazy, aren't they? So anyway, um, I guess Armando or whoever tell Mike, and Mike is like, he tells Rita, they just tried to kill Armando because they know he's the one who can identify the killer. And, you know, and Captain Howell was on to these people. You know, he's not he's not the one. He's not the he's not the rat. He's not Doty. So after a while they end up going to like um the studio, um and this is when they find actually this is when they find out and this is when the same uh one that Marcus uh, says I don't know why I got it on this this damn thing. Sorry. Mm. Marcus says he's Texas from the other side. Is, is they find out that uh, there's a certain individual. Captain Howard tells them to follow the Captain Cooler or something like that, and they know that the person that is that can give them some more information is the guy. Look it up on IMDb here. Oh, Fletcher, played by John. Sa is it Sally or Sally? Say, wow. So, Sally, he plays Fletcher. So Fletcher is, is the guy that can tell, give him more information. And, you know, there's this whole comic scene between Marcus Burnett and Fletcher. And, you know, Marcus ends up threatening him with the gun, pointing the gun in his face. And Mike is like, Marcus, what are you doing? And then he's like, I can't say what I'm supposed to say unless you say what you're supposed to say. And he's trying to, like, you know, do all this to let them know where the hint is, where the clue is. But they're not getting it, and because it says Captain Howard knew that you two dumb motherfuckers, because you people, because y'all are stupid, and I'm a genius. So basically, Captain Howard had it set up for Fletcher to help them find more information about the message, because he knew they wouldn't be able to figure it out. So he hides it in something that will live forever. It's basically a QR code. I don't know how that live forever, but um, the QR code functions as something. Once once they scan it, they they're able to unlock the next piece. Of information from Captain Howard, basically another video from Captain Howard, and um, this is when he tells them, "I do not know how high up this goes, but I need you boys to finish what I couldn't. I need you to find the people responsible." He, he tells them about how 
there's somebody uh, in in way up in the high the high, hierarchy that when he was walking on uh, getting them exposed, he actually took two guys, two of his men out of retirement. He called them in. Don't know if he paid them or not, but after he called them in and once they started the investigation, so to speak, they were somehow killed in a car crash. So that lets you know that the higher ups had found out about it and had gotten them killed. Of course, they covered the tracks, and that's and that's exactly why Howard did not want to involve his bad boys because he didn't want them to be killed next because he was seeing how serious it was getting. So he had to tread he had to tread more carefully and find another way of of of, of nailing the people responsible. And you know it, it's. You know, when it, when it comes to like high executives, high up in the high hierarchy, it's it's really hard because you got it's really dangerous because they can pin it on you and make it you know frame you, make it seem like you're the bad guy, and then get you you know arrested, mess up your name, which is exactly what they tried to do. And so, because it, it's two key players in this film that are involved in getting Howard framed, and people will think, well. It doesn't really matter because Howard died in, 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 in the third movie, but it does matter according to his daughter Judy, who was a U.S. Marshal, and her daughter, uh, Callie. Not Callie, like, you know, but Callie. And, and it would mess up their name, you know. It could mess with Callie, Callie's uh, education, her potential career, you know, by having her, her grandfather. Uh, uh, name in, in such a bad lighting and uh, stuff like that. So, so anyway, um, they have to clear the name of of Captain Howard, you know, for the sake of his family and for the sake of his personal. It's always personal in these bad boy movies. The only time I, I I think that it was not personal was in the first two. But then again, I have to rewatch those, and I've seen the first one like a lot, a lot, a lot more than any, many, uh, more than any of, more than any of them. But I know the third one is when it started to get real personal, and that's when it started to get outside of the drug cartel. I think that the drug cartel was the last one. Was, was That was the last time. The third one was the last movie that involved the drug cartel. This one involves the drug cartel, but it's small in a smaller way. Uh, so, going for the, um, yeah, mine saw that, so they, they find out that, uh, Oh, this is after a, a massive sh shootout scene because McGrath had cleverly shot Fletcher in the head, uh, and they don't even know it's him because he's wearing a cap and everything. And that's when, you know, Marcus is still pointing his gun at Fletcher, and Mike's like, "Did you sh did you shoot him?" And, and Marcus smells his gun. I don't think so. After a shootout involving gumballs and. Black gumballs, which is a flavor nobody likes. Marcus ends up using his tongue to absorb some fruit punch of a sort. And this is where Mike, I know Marcus really just spazzes out and starts double bearing everybody. He's like, I don't give a fuck. He does that because, like, for some reason, sugar just really makes him go crazy. And he's not supposed to eat sugar. He's not supposed to um, cons consume sugar at all. He's supposed to lay off the sweets, the sugar, and eat stuff like salads, you know, because he had a heart attack. So he's not supposed to do anything that would trigger another heart attack. You know when you get out of surgery or you get out of having something like a stroke or a heart attack, the doctor's going to order you to um, take it lightly, you know. Even I had to kind of drink water and not eat anything too too bad, you know, because I had surgery on my eye twice. That's why my eye is kind of red and why I'm doing this all the time. Hmm. I had to get that light out of my eye. So, they find the piece of information. They find out that they really have to get Armando transferred to Miami. So, they have, so Will has this whole plan that Weta and her boyfriend Lockwood, who is this Attorney wanting for mail. He he actually agrees because he says, you know, um, because Will, because uh, Mike says to Jeet to Rita, do it for Captain Howard, and and he looks at Lockwood. Lock, Lockwood's like, if I do this, I'm doing it for you, but I'm sticking my neck out. So if if this goes south or this doesn't work, uh, I'm gonna get in trouble. So don't 
So he's saying, like, don't mess it up for me, basically. Which makes you wonder, why is he so eager to help the bad boys? Anyway, yeah, Lockwood is like a new character, and I'll get to more of that in a bit. So they you know, get on the transport. Somehow McGrath and his men end up sn not sneaking on the uh, aircraft like I previously thought, and I'd obviously seen them. I don't know why it slipped my mind, but after watching it about like the second time, I'm like, no, they actually disguise themselves as guards. Uh and it's, it's you know it's funny because uh, I still don't completely understand this, but McGrath was a formal um, marine or whatever, and because of that, you know he he went rogue because during the whole cartel business they do uh, Colombian manicure, and they basically put him through duress, which Armando says to Dorn, it's called torture, man, you know. Um, he joins the cartels for some reason. And this is exactly... Because he was actually working for Armando's mom. And let me quickly pull up what her name was. Uh, bad Boys. There we go. For Life, 2020. Uh, I'm going to wait this one about... Seven. Oh, so it was Isabella Isabel Oretes, played by Kate Dale Castillo. That's why Armando's last name is Oretes. So, kind of want to go back and see that one, Oretes. Uh. Anyway, yeah, this whole movie actually starts out with another. Uh, another high speed chase but without the chase because just like the last one Mike Lowry he's driving his car and he's just going overly fast without a real need to it's just a way to show off and it doesn't have the whole at least this time Marcus doesn't open his door on a fire hydrant and ends up scratching his paint like he did in the last one but he, 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 he says he's, gonna, he's about to throw up and you know, in the last one, Mike Lowry said, "You, you better, you better drink it," meaning that he better not throw up in my car. But he says this time, "I dare you." And uh, Mike is Marcus is jokingly, jokingly saying, "I need some ginger ale." And he they, he goes to a store. Mike drives him to a store. And he goes gets the ginger ale. I should have mentioned this at the first, at the, at the beginning of my review. And he goes to get some ginger ale along with some Skittles because he's got a sugar sh sugar craving for some reason. And a hot dog. He tells the guy to put some relish on that motherfucker. And Mike gives him like 90 seconds, a minute and a half, then 85 seconds. He's like, I'm a grown man. Be nice. Oh, 85 seconds. Anyway, he ends up, you know, getting uh, this guy, this white guy trying to rob the store. And, you know, he's got a gun to my head. Please don't tell me there's, is there skills, is there skills on the counter. How you can watch the trailer or watch the movie to find out. Anyway, back to present. So they're trying to transfer uh, Amanda Huertes. And wouldn't you know it, the bad guys end up taking over the fucking plane. They kill the pilot, but not before having the pilot read a message that frames Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett for the deaths of everybody on board, making... All three of them, including Armando Oetis, uh fugitives on the one. And they do actually go on the one, well, well, uh, you know, actually pretty short. But they still go on the one and to the point where they have to camp out in the woods. And that's when they have to seek the expertise of Armando. This is when Armando is given more of a character. Instead of just being the one that can identify, identify the, kill, the killer, he can also help them survive on the one because he's done it numerous times, I guess. And uh, well, this is also a time when Mike is told to express himself and bond with his son <laughs> because... I mean, Martin Lawrence is given hilarious lines. He's just pulling off with the comedy, man. He keeps this movie going. He keeps you laughing and invested in the film. I mean, it's got a good balance of comedy along with the um, the action, man. It's like, it, somehow, it's better than the last one. The last one, people didn't really like. And this is before Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, you know. 
uh, and before Eddie Murphy made a point of it, but there's something about this one. I guess it's uh, Martin Lawrence's comedy. I mean, I know he was funny in the last one, and he's the reason that people saw the last one, but this one for sure. But also it's the whole father-son with uh, Mike and his son Armando. Also, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyway, they're on the one. Uh, they have to clear their names now, not just Captain Howard, so now the, the stakes are higher. Uh, as well as keep Armando alive. And there's this good little time when uh, Armando is about ready to abandon them because, you know, he's always the lone wolf. And he tells his father, get the fuck out of my way. It's like, no, you're the only one who can identify who killed Captain Howard. I mean, you can only, you're the only one who can identify the killers. And in a way, in a way, uh, Armando owes, owes Howard that because he's the one that killed Captain Howard. So we the audience would immediately see Amando as being greedy. But, you know, there's this moment when <laughs> Mike is holding on to his son, not letting go, and Marcus is, like, in the middle saying, Damn, y'all some strong motherfuckers. No, he says, he says, that, 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 uh, Lyle li- 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 DNA is a bitch. Y'all some strong motherfuckers. Okay, everybody on flex on three. And he's like, he's the one that keeps it. He keep, he he dial, he dials down he dials down the tension, you know, with comedy. So anyway, um, yeah, Armando agrees to work with them. I guess long story short, they end up making out of the woods after that funny scene when you know, Mike is telling them, Marcus is telling them how he died the other day. Two weeks ago, and he's like, "I'm sorry to hear that, man." Because Armando does have some humanity in him, you know. We see that later, and 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 Mike's like, "No, Mark is like, nah, best thing that ever happened to me. This shit's wild." Because apparently he can't die, which he ends up telling uh, Mike Olio. I'm kind of going all around because he walks in some traffic, and this is where you see Michael Bay. He's driving a Porsche, and he, and and um. Mike tells him, watch where you're going or whatever. And, and Michael Bay's like, crosswalk. He's telling him, whoa, bro, or something like that. You know Michael Bay's got to say, bro. Anyway. So, yep, so back in the woods, they're trying to survive. They end up making it to this uh, trailer park where they steal some clothes. And it's that whole... Very little moment of when you got these <clears throat> rednecks that come out that, that accuse them of stealing clothes, and Mike and Marcus is like, Just because we black, we're stealing your shit. These are my own black clothes that I got in my own black closet. And then, then Mike is like, <clears throat> Marcus, look at your shirt. And it says, pure, and it says, quote unquote, pure bread white boys. Or pure bread white boy, end quote. Pure bread, like, you know, it's just hilarious. And uh, the dude's got a shotgun pointed at him. And he's like, why don't you sing us a little Weber song? And then they go, and a strong woman, strong black woman. Oh, she's not black, though. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, at this whole time, Armando's trying to hotwire this truck. He ends up hotwiring the truck. They get in the car. Funny, though, he doesn't, he, he doesn't hit the white boys. He doesn't hit the, the you know, the people in the trailer park. I don't want to say, you know, what next anymore. <laughs> even though I said it. And, 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 and uh, Mike says... We're only borrowing it. We'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll tone it when we're done. And, and then Marcus says, "Just because we're, we're not stealing your shit, just because we're black." So he's got to put in some comic comedic racism. <laughs> yeah, you know, and even black people laugh at that moment because it is funny. Anyway, so they end up making it to a club. When, when by, um, gotta look at my, my, uh, gotta look at the IMDB page. So, where is Tabitha? Tabitha, so Tabitha, when by Tabitha, which is a woman that Mike knew and had, had sex with, you know, Mike was a playboy, he's, he has, he has had sex with multiple women throughout his career slash life. Tabitha is played by Tim, Tiffany Haddish. Haddish. 
Haddish, Tiffany Haddish, you know, she was in the, um, that We Sit Haunted House movie, along with Like a Boss and several other movies, including also Kino with the, about, you know, the, can, uh, but, well, you, you can look her up shit, so she's in this movie, and apparently she's the one that can hook them up with, like, a vehicle, clothes, and guns, or no, money, a vehicle, and guns, and, um, you know, um, Will, uh, I'm sorry, Mike introduces her to everybody, including her son. This is my son, Armando. And, and, and she's like, you got your, you got yourself a little Spanish son? And he's like, yeah, long, sto long story. And he's like, I'm going to need all this for me. And, he's, and she's like, you know, yeah, but I'm going to need a little something. I'm going to need something from you. And he's like, what do you mean? We're good for, we're good, we're good for that. And, and, and then she's like, well, you on the one, so things have changed. And it makes you wonder how she finds out. Actually, it's kind of a little foreshadowing. And he's and, he's, and she, she's going to need something. And, and and he says what? And she says, "quote unquote, I'm going to need you to eat this pussy." And end quote. And everybody's like, "Whoa!" And it's like Mike's like, "Uh, no, I'm not doing that because he's married now." And uh, which Marcus Burnett ends up <laughs> using as plausible deniability. He says to uh, Tabitha. Um, well, Mike's a married man now, so he's going to need some, you know, plausible deniability. So I'm going to have you lie down. So, Mike, I'm going to have you lie down, and uh, Tabitha, you're going to have to do the West. And she's like, I can fuck with that. And then he's, and, he, and, and then Mike's like, I, I'm not doing that. You know, even the Mondo's like, whoa. Anyway, turns out she has them set up. She's just stalling because she needs that $5 million that's on the heads. And this is where you see the the whole black gang come in from the last scene. And they point guns at him. She tells them to get down, and they tell them to get up. And, and, and he's like, y'all want a dead or alive. Don't do anything stupid. So they end up following these men. Marcus is like, I'm about to bust out of this, out of this motherfucker. And Mike's like, no, you're not. We're about to go wherever, wherever they tell us. And he's like, on three. They end up, just when he counts, some other people arrive, another gang, start shooting. Apparently those three gangs that are after the bounty of Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett. And also when the character played by DJ Khaled, Manny, even Manny's after him. And then Mike is like... Uh, you know what, Mar Armando's like, you know him? And, and Mike is like, uh, yeah, I smashed his hammer uh, a, f a few years ago. Basically, in the last, uh, no, I smashed his hand with the hammer. No, I hit him with the hammer a few years ago. That's basically in the last film. And uh, this is kind of funny because DJ Khaled is like, you see, I got the fam with me, streets. We can do this nice and easy, or we can go to war. It's a fucking war. And I don't know. I think DJ Kelly was actually trying too hard, just like in the last film, because he's like overly excited. Uh, anyway, before that, you get this whole funny scene when uh, Mike Mark says to uh, Mike, I know he's your son, and he puts it in air quotes. He's like, Why you got to air quote it? You know, he's like, Oh, I'm sorry. But, you know, and he does the air quotes, like, below, and he's like, okay, doing the air quotes down here doesn't air quote them. And he's like, okay, your son. He's like, oh, no, it's like, you do like this. It's like you're saying he's not really my son. He's like, well, your son is getting away. Oh, shit. You know, that's us in the whole wood scene. Uh, so they, had, they end up getting away from these guys. They get in the van. The van ends up catching on fire. Armando, of course, he sees the fire. And they're like, Marcus is like, the fire's on the outside. Then he gets on the inside. Now the fire's on the inside. And, you know, Mike Lowry tell him that, that uh, windshield washer is flammable. And he's like, how am I supposed to know that? I'm no scientist. You know, the scene from the trailer. And it ends up boning up. They have to, right before they dive out, some reason Judy ends up getting intel about them because they, of course, get the call in somehow through the radio. And Judy sees Armando and she immediately starts to fire at him. Somehow misses a shot. Somehow he ducks. The van ends up blowing up right after they jump out. And, you know, we see one of the people that was after Mike the Bounty being handcuffed. Looks like the actor just kind of threw himself on the hood instead of him being pushed. Uh, let's see. I wish I could say long story short, but there's actually more to go into it. 
So, um, I don't know if I should break this down into part one and two. Maybe collect my thoughts and... To, because this is kind of the midpoint right now because I'm still in the one. And there's a moment when... Oh, okay, now I remember. They end up going to Dorn's house. They <laughs> used to say, we can hear you in there or something like that. And Dorn, played by Alexander Ludwig, I guess his name... You know, he's got the door locked for a reason. And they end up breaking, they end up getting into his house. And he's like, can we reconvene in just a moment? And it turns out that him and Kelly, played by Vanessa Hudgens, have been making out. They were seeing each other outside of work. And he's like, look, it just started a few months ago. And I couldn't hide it anymore. So, you know, um, and, he, and he says, and she says, except for that time of that thing. And he's like, I'm not sorry for that. And, he, and Marcus says... It's not to be sorry about, and then Mike's like, yeah, people do that shit, meaning that over time when people are partners, they develop like a beyond friendship, and they start to feel a thing for each other, and they start to develop a, you know, a fling or a relationship, and then they start dating, and they've been dating for a couple of months now. This immediately kind of puts the, the two characters in an important relationship, because they're the only remaining ones of ammo that small little pill military group from the last one. You know, last time you had the other two join in. But, uh, yeah. So, they need their help because they need Dorns and his tech stuff, his tech savviness, his equipment and his genius. They end up going through a bunch of photos and, oh, by the way, Dorn had helped them with the QR code to find the next piece of information from the great Captain Howard. Armando goes through some photos with them, with Dorn, and he sees one with the guy, McGrath, and he's like, blow it up. Or he actually, no, he gets a photo, and he has it scanned to his uh, scanner, and, uh, and Dorn is like, do I, did I tell you how to run your, your, your um, meth lab? Do I come in your, and then bust in your meth lab, or something like that? And he's like, blow it up. And so he blows up the image, zooms in, and he says, that's him. And so Armando has identified the killer, not the killer, but the, the one responsible for framing Captain Howard, so to speak. And they end up, you know, telling Mike tells Rita, and he just says to Rita, we'll turn ourselves in in the morning. And so, yeah, they plan on turning themselves in because they have to in order to clear their name and also to put Armando back into custody and do the whole process, the whole legal process. Um, but... You know, it's not going to end there. They have to have one final fight with McGrath. And, you know, they... Oh, now I remember. There's this awesome scene with, with Reggie. So, McGrath's men have split into two. Half of them go to Marcus's family, and the other half go to Mike's family. And first we see Mike, uh, Marcus's family uh, get targeted, but... Marcus is able to warn Reggie, who's playing video games, he just loves that damn Xbox, he's sitting there on the couch playing video games, you know, getting into like, that Call of Duty, you know, he's got to work off that, uh, that, that trigger, tr trigger, trigger, trigger finger, because he's an ex-military, or actually not ex-military, he's still on duty, but, and that's actually goes back to the prior scene earlier when he says, Reggie, I need you to, to, to deploy, you know, he says, I'm a U.S. Marine, so, well, then you need to deploy. And he got, he got, I just got back from whatever, and he's like, well, you need to deploy, or something like that. I love just assets. Anyway, um, that's when he's trying to find out who threw away his Skittles. But then we have, uh, so, he's one Wedgie. Wedgie immediately puts his family in the closet, unlocks his safe with his pistol, and does this whole U.S. Marine sneak attack on the men that, was, that, and that snuck themselves into the house. Uh, he kills him pretty quickly, also very, very cleverly. He has this one one moment that he, he loads a dude's rifle up and cocks a gun and shoots him with it when it's still in his hands and then uses that to kill out the other guys. And he doesn't just blast away like they're doing. He actually only, he makes his shots count. So he goes like, you know, like he's been trained. And then right when he... Right when the, they make one of the guys makes his way into the closet that his wife and 
mother-in-law are hiding in, that he puts him in to hide. He kills him. And then Marcus says, my snatch is your snatch, Reggie, whatever that means. I think it's my snatch or your snatch, because I'm talking about the Skittles. Then there's this whole moment whenever either he, you know, pushes his family, pushes his family out of the way, makes sure they get out of the way safely. He just salutes the camera. Like Reggie knows where the camera is. And he's he, kind of like he knows Marcus. Somehow he knows that Marcus is there watching. He's like, it's so funny. It's an awesome clapping moment. Anyway, so Marcus's family is, is saved by Reggie. It, see, that's the scene that gives Reggie something to do. It doesn't just make his character like, are they going to do something with this character? Are they going to make him significant and important somehow? Because they keep showing him in the camera. How is he important? Like, you can't just introduce characters other than the wife of the main characters without... Yeah, we know he's married to Marcus's daughters, and that's essentially his son-in-law, but give him something else to do. Make him important and significant some other way. And that's that moment right there. I'm like, yeah, they were hanging They were hanging on to Reggie for something. I knew it. Actually, I didn't know it, but, you know, I could lie and say that. Although I won't. So, Mike's family ends up getting... Hostage, well, his wife does, along with Callie, who apt actually makes it makes it makes her way to um Mike's house just in time for it to be invaded by none other than McGrath and somebody else, two of his up two two other two of two other soldiers of his. They take uh, what's what's Mike's wife's name? Christine and Callie hostage, and this sets it up for like this whole thing to be done um, involving an alligator farm attraction site, alligator theme park, alligator based theme park, and this is when he says, "Your wife for your son," kind of thing. McGrath has it set up for an exchange. I'll give your wife for your if you give over your son Amando. Because Amando is the one that identified him, so he's like, before you take Amando in, you bring me him, I'll give, I'll give you your wife. And um, Amando hears that, and he's like, I'll go. Let my, let my life mean something. And then, this is a heartwarming moment. <laughs> Mike says, Neville, Neville, meaning that he's going to, do something else, and this is when he starts to have another another panic attack. I think it's like a second panic attack. Yeah, that's right. Mike Lowry is having panic attacks now. The first one started when he was on the highway. Somehow he accidentally ejected his gun, and he's just thinking about how he messed how he messed up, how he feels responsible for Captain Howard's death, even though he wasn't. And <laughs> this is when Marcus. I actually remember Marcus actually told a dude in a vehicle. To go right after he gets on his, not even his hood, but like where his um, where the motor is, he gets on it and he's like standing on it with a gun as the dude is driving. And Mike is like, "What are you doing, detective work or something?" I don't know. Like Mark is just really doing some Devin May Carroll shit. He's just off the chains. Don't give a fuck with this one. It's just even it's what makes it so funny. <laughs> Anyway, so we see they have a plan. Mike starts to get with Rita on how to. Well, first of all, they got to find out how did where, how did they know that um, Armando had identified the person, the the person person responsible. How did he identify McGrath? Well, Olio. Mike Lowry ends up telling uh, Rita about how they had, they they got the identity now. We're gonna turn ourselves in the, in the in the morning, and she tells that to her boyfriend Lockwood, who you know is playing it off. And Marcus figures it out, like she said. And even Mike says it's not Rita, like because they're asking. Marcus is like, how do they, even, how do they even know that we identified them? How do they know that uh, um, Armando identified them? The only other person you told was is Rita. And Mike says, it's not Rita. Then Marcus figures it out. Damn, she's got bad taste in men. It's none other than Lockwood. So the thing about Lockwood is, 
you know, Lockwood is a um, a new character, and if you haven't seen it now, you should have been able to pick on it earlier. That basically that's why they resolved him. He's that character that is the rat. He's the one that was at the top, staging a lot of shit. And so Rita and so so Mike texts Rita, warns her. And she plays it off, gets in the elevators, and, you know, Lockwood follows her, and she's like, who are you texting? And he's like, I just, I gotta let the office know. And it's got that annoying fucking texting sound that I just hate so fucking much. People, please just put your damn texting sound on mute like I do. Like, look, I go into my text app right now, and I literally have it. As soon as you see the keyboard, I could just... Minus the whole fucking keyboard of Android, I could just text without a signal. I got vibration, so I got haptics feedback, but I don't have that annoying sound. Anyway, you gotta hear it because it's a movie. Um, he's texting really McGrath or whatever, and this just causes you know Weeder to grab his phone. He's like, "Give it back." He keeps saying it, but then he says it in such a way that it's actually seemed violent, and she's like. Yeah, it's you, motherfucker. And they have this brief little fight in the elevator. The camera's spinning around to build tension. He ends up knocking her out, but not before the elevator opens with um, Kelly, I think her name is, which is Vanessa Hutch Hutch Hutchins. I want to say Hutchison, like Josh Hutchison. What is her name? I think it's Kelly. Nah, oh, man, I hate it when fucking IMDb loads. Mm. Yep, Kelly. Kelly has got Lockwood in a chokehold while Dawn pulls, uh, pulls uh, his boss, Rita, safely out of the elevator. And then they end up tying Lockwood up and they have a plan to... Now they have a hostage of their own so they could exchange Lockwood for Mike's wife. That's that's the plan Mike ends up coming up with. Exchange with Mike and Rita. Exchange Lockwood for his wife. His wife to his wife, not Teresa, I'm sorry. Uh Christina. Christine. So I'm gonna try to kinda browse through this rather quickly now. They have a plan, they end up uh getting a plane somehow. One of those, you know, planes that land in the water. And uh, Mike and Marcus are hidden, Mike with a sniper rifle, and he actually has a shot right at um, McGrath's head, but he can't take it because he's having another panic attack, because he sees that he's got his wife in front of him as this hostage, and he's just thinking about, it's, it's just, the people that are, that are, so the panic attacks are caused by when Mike thinks about his former uh, Captain Howard, how he feels responsible for Howard's death. Then he's thinking about his wife. So he's thinking about how he doesn't want to lose his wife like he lost his captain. And because it makes Mike seem human and vulnerable. Well, see, we're used to we're used to seeing Mike Lowry as kind of risk taking, impulsive, and even bad boy can't die, kind of like what Marcus is being now. But now he's more humbled. You know, he's not as arrogant. He's not risk-taking like he was in the prior three films, you know? So, when we see this, it's like it just adds more breadth to the character of Mike Lowry. And um, I just want to make sure that everything's being picked up with this computer of mine. Anyway, so, they're at an alligator farm. There's only one alligator left. It's abandoned by humans, as Kelly says, but there's still one alligator, and that's an albino alligator that Dorn looks up because he's the tech guy, and he's like, fuck that, an alligator? And this alligator plays significance later. <laughs> so they have this shootout because the alligator is slowly making its way to Armando, who has snuck his way in using the waddle. In the prior scene, Armando had used this awesome propelling agent to dive himself down into the water. Kind of like Marine style, you know, Navy SEAL style. You know, instead of just diving in, they have this way to propel them forward into the water so they can sneak in the other end. And he snuck in, so he snuck in, he's like in the water underneath the bridge that they are walking on or whatever. And McGrath is like halt because he sees the alligator going somewhere. And the alligator does not move 
the way it moved, unless it sees somebody or something in the water. And wouldn't you know it, Armando's right there, and the alligator is headed right to him. And McGrath knows that the house, he doesn't know it's Armando, but he knows it's somebody. And he's like, we're not alone. So he lets his other man know, and, and then um, I'm still looking up on IMDb because I cannot remember for the life of me. Oh, Litz, played by Derek Russo, he's like, he does this, lets them know that they're not alone. And then uh, there's this guy that's standing right on top of Armando, and he happens to look down, and Armando shoots him first. Then the whole shootout starts. Uh, there's this brilliant time that uh, Dawn uses the drone to let down a grenade and just kills out, it takes out the sniper because um, Mike's like, Dawn, I need you to take out that sniper. And Dawn just flies, controls it with a remote and sends that motherfucker right to him and stops that grenade. It's fucking awesome, dude. After that, um, yeah, it's just a shootout. Dawn even uses the fucking drones to drop, you know, uh, drop off smoke bombs to kind of make it to where they could sneak their way in because they need some smoke, basically. And the bad guys are trying to shoot at the drones as they're flying around. Uh, but this is not before that Will has, I'm sorry, Mike has another yet another panic attack and he actually sees Captain Howard and you're like, how? And I just love Will Smith's expression. He's like, his, his acting is just fucking awesome because his whole expression is like, he goes from uh, very, very sad to relieved. And it's why when Captain Howard says, it's okay, not your fault, he's like, I can't believe I'm seeing you, not my fault. I knew it wasn't my fault. No. <laughs> No, he, he, know, you know, he, he just lets him know it's not his fault, and he's like, thank you, kind of way. So he's like, we'll leave, but then Marcus slaps him. He's like, get out and stop that shit, not now. And he's like, I need you to be bad boy, bad boy Mike. And, he's, and he keeps slapping him, keeps slapping him, and Mike, Mike's like, okay, hold on a minute. <laughs> then they, um, you know, they have this chant to where, like, let, let, uh, just because you're bad, let bad be the good type of thing. They start shooting. Uh, a missile comes right for Mike, and Mike is just like this. I'm like, nah, man, come on. He's not even that lucky. He ducks out of the way. He dodges a fucking missile. They start shooting and shit. They make their way in. After after Dorn has all these little fucking drones going in, this is the fucking bombs. And then this is awesome scene when, like, you know, they, they're, like, single-handedly shooting people with the pistol, and it goes from first person, it goes from their face to this first person kind of video game, Call of Duty type of thing that Marcus and Mike do. Um, I want to include a link to the whole behind the scenes of that one moment. Everybody's talking about it. Apparently, people, somebody had leaked the behind the scenes of that very scene before the movie even came out, like, I think last week. Um, when did this movie get, get oh, crap. This movie was released uh, I, I can't find out. Shit. This is released, man. Come on, man. Bad boy, why did I die? Okay. Oh, God. Don't you just love it when your phone is so fucking slow? Ah, Wikipedia, here we go. Ah, May 22nd, which was... Damn, that's almost a month ago, I think. Nah. Oh, I was looking at the Coca-Cola arena. June 7th, <laughs> Coca-Cola arena. June 7th. Friday, two weeks ago. Well, yeah, about two weeks ago. It'd be two weeks. It'd be three weeks ago on the 24th. So Friday, the 7th, the 7th, the 7th. Yeah. Anyway, so they, 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 uh, Mike sees McGrath. McGrath ends up, you know, he has his wife, Teresa, sorry, Christine by, by her dreads. And he, you know, Cox a grenade, drops it, and they dodge out of the way. It's like, nice to meet you, Mr. Lowry. And then, uh, this is like, I think, 
Oh God, this is Mike makes his way to him. This is like Mike makes his way to him because he's like he's uh he's down below now, and he he, he decides to jump on this glass, and then Mark, Marcus wants to follow, and then Marcus is like, "Here, Marcus is like I'm coming in," and Mike's like, "No, no," because if he drops down, then they all they'll bust through the water, and Marcus is like, "Here I come, baby," and then they end up falling through the water, but. Um, this, this is when the alligator, the Abano alligator comes in, and, and, uh, Marcus is like, um, wait, Mike, I got this, and then he tells the gator, he's like, it's just Dookie, baby, and he tells Duke, who he calls, he calls the alligator Duke, he tells it to leave, he's like, he's like, gator, be gone, gator, I will buke you, and then he's like, see, Mike, that's how you control the universe, and the gator ends up biting at his arm, and then Mike has to get a fucking pipe and you know, wedge it into his eye or whatever, or his face. The gator goes off. They make their way to dry land. Uh, this is where after the helicopter had, that the, the plane had fell through and kills, uh, I forgot his name yet again. God, I'm just looking terrible memory. Oh, kills Litz, played by Derek Russo. Kills him. Chuck gets, he's been chopped by the propeller. I wonder if a propeller would be a chopper portion up. And, um, Lockwood is alive still, limping out of, the, out of it with a pistol. Dorn thinks he's, uh, he needs help, but Dorn doesn't know it's, he doesn't know, Dorn doesn't know it's him. He shoots Dorn in the shoulder. It looks like it just chipped him or whatever. It just goes right by him. And then, um, uh, Weeks, Weedo sees him, uh, ends up. And, and, and Block was like, you don't want to shoot me. You think he, gets, he can use their prior relationship as a way to manipulate her. And, and she's like, you're right. And she ends up kicking him into the water. And he's eaten by none other than the fucking gator. The albino alligator. And I like the, and I like the way the alligator ate him. It, it wasn't just like this sneak attack. Like, I'm coming to get you, motherfucker. It was just, he just he's just right there. And it, you know. Anyway. Well, we see McGrath. Um, they make their way out of the the, the whole... Alligator attraction uh, theme park, and then Marcus stumbles upon this island that he saw at the beginning, right before he wakes up in the hospital. Right when before he saw, it's the same place he saw. It's the same location he saw his uh, Captain Howard when Captain Howard told him it was his time. And that's for some reason Marcus gets this stupid idea that he's he can't die. So he sees the the little island because it's like this this tree, this fallen tree in, in front of it with this bow that flies off. He's like, I've been here before. And then McGrath has got his gun right by his head. He's like, oh shit. Then so McGrath has got two hostages, Christina and Marcus. And he's in he's for he's, for, he's forcing uh, Mike to uh, choose your wife or your or your partner. One of them is gonna die. And he's like, and Mike responds. So, here's what you don't know. One of them can't die. And Marcus just replies, Who? And he's like, He's like, a wise man once told me I was going to have to make a choice. And Marcus is like, You better check with that motherfucker before you go around choosing shit. And he shoots Marcus, Mike shoots Marcus through his vest so that he can make McGrath stumble and let go of Christina. He shoots... McGrath a few times, like I don't know, five or six times, right before he shoots him dead on in the head, and it just it just makes it, it just makes it drag out instead of just going with the headshot. We just see him shoot him like in the other body parts, and they finally shoot him in the head, kind of like that time, uh, just like the Fosh movie actually. Um, for those of you who look for like common uh, relate relations between all the old bad boy films and this one, and so in the first. Mo- Bad boys. Mike did the same thing to the saint, to the bad, to the to the bad guy. In that one, he shot he shot him in the head. He actually shot him in the head with just one shot, though. He killed him in one shot. And I say that because the bad guy had had the woman, and um, he had her as a hostage. So anyway, um, shoots him in the head, kills him. The day is saved. Uh, Marcus is steadily bitching about how he shot him. And, and, he's, and Mike's like, I shot you in the vest. Quit bitching. It's like, you done gone and shot me. Get, get, you, get your, get your uh, donkey hooves off me, Mike. Because earlier on, um, Marcus had told Mike, get some yet 
other hysterical delusional shit. You know, in a past life, you were a donkey and I owned you. This is this was when they were in the um transport, transporting Armando to a Miami before it got before the pilots were killed and before they were forced as fugitives to traverse through the woods. And uh my Mark was saying but I was a terrible owner, you know, you were hard headed and I beat you. But I think I you know, I, I something something and, and then Mike's like Did you miss your nap? I don't have your blankie, but maybe you can just waste your head and waste your eyes. And he's like, see, that's how he was as a donkey. And he's like, do you need, you need your seat buckle, t- seat belt tightened? And he's like, get off me, donkey. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just little moments of, you know, as partners, they joke around. <laughs> it's so funny. So the day is saved, and, uh, you know, you got the whole recovery thing with the paramedics there, just like the first two movies. I forgot how the third one ended. Mike has uh, really been berated by Marcus of how, how he shot him. He's like, see, Christina, see what you you, could, you devoted your life to? And he's, and, and Christine, I mean, and, and, it, and after that, he's like, Christine, don't kiss him, Christine. Don't kiss him, Christine. Mike is uh, saying to him, uh, you know, well, Marcus is saying, you know what, Mike, I'm going to go, I'm a, in our next life, I'm going to come back as a pair of shoes. And I'm going to walk it out kind of, sh- no, no, he's like, you're going to come back in the, he says, in our next life, you're going to come back as a pair of shoes. And I'm walking out kind of shit, and I'm not going to wear any socks. No, he's like, anyway, yeah, it's funny. Um, but that's not the ending of it. Uh, the ending scene is like when they have a barbecue scene in a public park. Marcus has got this thing where he thinks every grill is his, so... Marcus and Mike fight over the fucking grill, and and Mike's like, you know, this is a public park. You don't own every grill you see. And uh, Marcus is like the grill master. Wedgie comes along wanting to, he requests permission to cook his chicken, and Marcus and Mike both laugh. He's like, permission denied, Wedgie. Why don't you go play with the kids? This is the grown-up area, and he's still standing right there, isn't he? Yeah, oh, he think he's hard now. Well, you got to let that motherfucker know that this is, this is our area. And and Marcus is like, oh, he did kill did kill fifteen people back at the house. So you're not gonna handle this shit. No, I'm gonna put the chicken. He's like, okay, permission granted, Reggie. You know, and Reggie's like salutes, and he does this. He just smiles at the end, and that's when it that's where it ends. So. I want to say that this movie, I know I've gone into an hour, I didn't mean to be that long, but uh, it's really great to see this one, I'm glad, I'm hoping that this is the final one, there was no uh, cut scene, you can watch the movie for that, or, I'm sorry, there was no mid credit scene, you could Google that even, but this one does kind of make up for why the third one wasn't was so good, f- for sure. I would say definitely go see this movie if you're not sure, if you don't want to risk it. See it on a Tuesday, Discount Tuesdays, that you can see it for 7 bucks. you know, at one of the major theaters. I see it at AMC theaters, and so, you know, you're not really wasting a lot of money for $7. Um, also, I know that a lot of people were kind of on the fence because of what Will Smith did uh, to Chris Rock. I would say don't even think about it. Just go see this movie for a movie, you know. Don't be one of those people that don't want to see it all because, you know, keep my wife's name out your mouth type of, you know, thing. It's really, it's a fun movie, man. It's it's fun for the family, minus that uh, tab of the scene, uh, T- Tiffany Haddish, about how she wanted Michael to perform, or, or sex on her. That's when you should have your kids go out of the theater, you know. But other than that, I mean, it's it's your typical bad boys, you know, with Amando, played by, let's see if I can get his name real quick, Jacob Scipio, I guess. Uh, Scipio, I really don't know how to say his name. This guy's a good actor, you know, he's a good actor. Um, i got to give him credit. He was in, um... He was in a few films. Uh, he was in. He was recently in The Expendables Four, 
last year. And also he was in the unbearable massive talent. The unbearable weight of massive talent. That movie with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> he played the, the brother of a... Uh, or the henchman of somebody else. His character wasn't really that, that big, though, in that one. He's really known for Bad Boys, uh, besides this, and Bad Boys for Life, and, uh, yeah, Spinnables 4, and some other movies, but I'm not really familiar. Apparently, with that remorse with Michael B. Jordan. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. So, yeah, please go see this movie.